Okay, finally ready to start my first live Facebook uh, video on curriculum. So this is July 2020. While everyone is scrambling to figure out what they're gonna do with their children during the coronavirus pandemic. And so we're trying to help others along that maybe are considering or choosing homeschool for the first time, or maybe you've been homeschooling for a while and you wanna try some different curriculum and wanna see what's out there. So I love curriculum. I've been homeschooling for 12 years since the beginning of my oldest child's education when he was four years old. So um, I feel like I kind of know some stuff, even though there's a lot of really popular curriculum we've never even touched. So I know a lot about the stuff I love. And so I thought I'd do some videos about the stuff I do know about. And especially for older kids, junior high, high school, even though we've only been through it with one or two kids, my oldest is headed into 10th. Um, I don't see a lot of videos for those. I see a lot of like unboxings or here's what we're gonna use for the year, but I don't see a lot of follow-up. And so I wanna start with that today. And my hope is that um, I am going to cover all of the good and the beautiful that I've owned or used and um, afterwards put, you know, high school starts after minute 132, uh, junior high stuff starts after minute 550, um, so that if you don't need all of that stuff and you wanna zoom right to the younger levels, you can know exactly where to head out. But before I do that, and before you leave to head out to some of the other levels you wanna go through, I do wanna say that if you're watching this anytime close to summer of 2020, um, know that the good and the beautiful and a lot of curriculums are sold out right now in their physical copies because so many people are wanting to homeschool. Nobody expected this. And not only that, but the people who print for them are also having to cut back on their numbers because of the pandemic and to make sure they keep social distancing. Um, so publishers and producers um, are not able to put out as quickly as possible. So. Um, between demand and production, there is a lot sold out for The Good and the Beautiful right now. Um, but if you follow their Facebook page, The Good and the Beautiful community, and I'll link all of that too, um, you can find out pretty quickly when something's in stock that you might need and order it right away before it sells out. But with many curriculums, and particularly with The Good and the Beautiful, they offer everything in PDF form. So whether you wanna just get their PDF, and I'll talk more about what's free, um, regardless of anything, it's just flat out free. Um, or you wanna get it, you know, use some of the free PDF, and then when your product does come back in stock, you can get that. You can use it just on your tablet or use something like OpenNote to write in the spaces on your tablet without even printing it out. You can print out just the first few weeks while you wait for your stuff to come in. There's lots of options, even though some of what you want might be sold out. So I did wanna lead with that because I think it's very important because people are starting to freak out. But everybody I've heard, and I agree, just wait. You don't have to start when the public schools start. Enjoy your time together with your family. Enjoy exploring nature when you can. It's really hot where we are, so that's kind of silly, but we can still play games together inside and um, do lots of water activities outside. And um, so there's still lots of learning. Read, 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 read books, picture books, chapter books, read, read, read. Um, there's so much knowledge just in the books that you can put on hold at the library and run by and pick up real quick while you wait for something to come in stock. So that being said, um, I'm going to start with high school and then I'm going to move my way down to level two. Now I didn't know The Good and the Beautiful is probably six or seven years old and they came out, you know, with something as they finished. So what they have now is like three quarters more than what they had when I first looked into it. I sat on it for a couple of years watching the company grow and people interact on their Facebook groups before we jumped full on in last year. So we dabbled a little bit the year before. Last year we jumped full in um, with lots of their curriculum. So I'm gonna kind of flip this so you can see real quick what I have. So I've got high school and the junior high levels. We've got our handwriting, creative writing, and then we've got the younger levels here. We've done two sciences. I One my friend has, but this one um, I will show you also in the video. And I wanted to also show you their website. Sorry, my screen is dirty. 
So their website has tons of answers. So you've got your pre-K curriculum here and your high school. And within those, um, like I said, they offer free stuff, just flat out free. They are like no other curriculum I have ever seen, unless all of it's free, like easy peasy. There's several online curriculums that are just free. But they offer all of their curriculum free. So if you scroll down, um, sorry, it finally decided to go. Um, if you scroll down, free homeschool curriculum. So language arts levels one through five are completely free. So that means hundreds and hundreds of pages of their um, program, even when they come out with their brand new stuff that they've spent a year updating, which they're recently doing, it is all free for the PDF form. Um, no one else that I know that has this kind of curriculum does that. So um, also their science, they have one science unit that's free, which is, I believe, marine biology. Yes. So you get that by signing up with the email. The other thing you want to make sure you do is once you're in the program and you've decided that maybe I do want to do this, you want to get your kids the assessment done because their curriculum for language arts only is advanced. You want to make sure that you get your child in where they need to be. So definitely do that and definitely put them in the level it says. Even if your junior higher is in level three, it's not third grade. It just means that they need to fill in some holes. And so you can work through it very quickly. You can skip over what they already know and just cover what they need. And because so much of the PDF versions are free, you can not spend a ton of money getting book after book after book every few months. You can just use the free one to fill in the holes and then get them set in what they need. Definitely check out the facts, helps, and extras. Lots of great stuff in there. Um, but this is where you're going to find the different levels. But they also offer um, history, which we haven't done, so I won't be talking about that today. Sciences, they are up to level three math right now. We already have lots of math that we love, so I didn't want to spend any money on that, but I've heard great things about it. And then within their electives, I will be talking about the creative writing notebook. Um, we also have the nature notebook, which we've used a little of because it was free uh, when the pandemic first started. Oh, typing. I didn't pull typing out. We also have that book. Um, so I'll be talking about all of that in this video and then their high school curriculum. Sorry, this isn't a screen share. I don't know how to do that. That's too fancy. Uh, we've done high school one. We just ordered high school two. And we've done one of the honors book study, which I will begin talking about now as soon as I get my camera flipped around. Okay. So first up is high school. So these are the booklets that you get for high school. There are 10 of them, so I've just pulled out a sampling of them. They cover not only language arts, which includes grammar, composition, um, it includes literature. So these are the four books for the year. Sorry, everything is backwards. Kind of give you an idea of the length. Um, the numbers at the very tops of the book are reading level. Um, and then it covers geography. So not only do you study about the countries, you draw maps of them and you, they use a lot of um, like that see-through paper. I can't think of what it's called now. So you trace several times throughout the curriculum to really embed in the child's mind um, that particular country. And so throughout the program, they will have you study different places. I think he was focusing on America this year. But these maps come in a whole pack of maps. So here's the pack. And there's Greek and Latin roots that they will work on memorizing. And they will also work on at least one poem for the year. So it has the poem on one side and blanks on the other to help with memorizing. And so once you do, I think they're only doing three levels of high school language arts and then they're doing American um, literature study and then a British literature study. But um, their language arts three is still yet to come out. They're gonna have partial release before Christmas, I think in September. Um, and actually the first four uh, booklets are free PDFs when it first comes out. So you can get a really good taste of what that's gonna be. And then I think after the new year is when the rest of the language arts level three for high school will come out. 
but all of this will be used throughout all of that. So he only did this for high school one. Um, so it covers geography and it also covers art. So you get several credits. You get a half credit for geography, a half credit for art instruction or appreciation, I can't remember right now, and then a full credit for language arts, including um, literature. So in the back of every single booklet, there's an art project. So some of it was watercolor and some of it was drawing. Um, so this one is a pineapple, sorry, my hands are slippery. And it walks you through step by step how to paint it after you draw it. Um, my favorite one was he drew a face, it was incredible. It was really neat to see this kid go from I can't draw to drawing an incredible full face, just really neat. So um, inside these, this language arts is, they call it a mix of Charlotte Mason, traditional and classical. So you've got kind of, it hits on all the points of learning styles, which I love, but it's also um, quick, but thorough. So instead of sitting for hours upon hours, trying to get grammar done or reading done, um, it's quick, but it really cements it in their mind. And before this, we kind of jumped around all different curriculums and some stuff, there was just holes when you do that, there just is. And so I really feel like this wrapped all of that up for him and now he's set and ready in a great trajectory. So there's spelling, um, which is done through video. So anytime you see a little video mark, there's a video for it. There's one right there. And so the author has created a video for the high schooler to watch. This is particular to high school because it's more independent to watch whether it's grammar or a discussion on poetry. There's a lot of poetry in this curriculum um, or a discussion on all kinds of stuff. Um, not every day is there a video though. So don't think that it's not taught, um, it's read. So. Um, anyway, so it usually starts out with some kind of author or artist study, moves on to paintings. Lovely, amazing, rip these out and hang them on the wall paintings. Sometimes it just says, look at this painting for two minutes and appreciate the shadowing. Or what are the little details that you can see? Enjoy this painting for two minutes. Which I think for high schoolers, when it's so go, 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 they just need to take a breath and enjoy God's creation. And this curriculum is so good about that. And also that art at the end of the book is a really great motivator for just finishing up. So here's, you can see was a tree in this particular book. So after you read about the artist, there might be um, your geography study. So here's something on New York. You might study the map, trace the map, um, and then in this particular one, I think this was the only one, but he did a slideshow. Um, and then you move into some of the grammar work. So the grammar work is taught both through the video links and through the grammar and writing guide, which you only need one of for all of high school. And this gives you instruction in all different areas of grammar. And for my son, this really helped him understand what grammar needed to be, holes he was missing, steps he needed to take in maturity and really understanding the fine tuning of our language. So excellent, excellent resource. And it's all neatly and perfectly tied together with their lesson, tells them right when to do it. Um, so again, it's all self-taught except for a few videos here and there. And then there's vocabulary. So it comes right from the reading and um, you work through that. Then at the end, you've got a review of everything learned in that book and some past stuff, and then they take a test. And so at the very front of the book, I'm gonna cover that up since that's like his private stuff, but um, you can see what your score should be based on for that. And it's up to each parent exactly how they want to implement that permanently on their transcript. But um, so you can give them a unit grade. The writing portion, if your child is not used to how to write a paper and how to um, put paragraphs together, um, you may want to supplement a little bit with that. By high school, the hope is that they can write a three to five paragraph paper without needing to know 
about openers and closers and you know that you need supporting details that should kind of already be established by high school so if it isn't you may need to fill in with something else but for their writing you're given several choices in each booklet of what you want your paper to be about the choices are sometimes about what you've read in the literature book but sometimes it's just share a life experience and they can choose from any one of those and they've got goals to reach and you grade it based on that. There is also a parent video section um, on their website <clears throat> that tells you how to grade papers if you need that. What I loved about the Insight Journal is what they call their um, writing paper for each booklet is that it helped my son not just in his old program, it was like, here's a passage, rewrite the passage. What he needed was a release of his creativity again that he used to have in the beginning. And so he was able to draw that out with this program and really think, how do you feel about this book? How do you feel about the experience you had similar to the characters in the book? And actually write a significant amount of information. So you had to really think hard about how am I gonna support this opinion? I need to really think and feel it through. And that was really, really good for him. Um, so for his uh, needs, his freshman year, this was filled so many holes for him and really drew out what he needed for his education. And I loved that. And um, like I said, it's, it's gentle but thorough. Um, and yet, in some ways, it's also very... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, I can't think of it. Not all these books are easy. Just David starts out that, with a book that is very warm and just makes you feel good, um, but Into the Unknown is a little drier. And I said, I do want you to read the dry books because in college there are things you're not gonna wanna read. Um, and so then we moved on, we finished early because we started the first book in eighth grade. So we moved on, I had this printed myself after I got the PDF, to the Screwtape Letter Honors Book Study. Now, when I looked through this in the beginning, I was like, oh yeah, that looks pretty easy. We can finish that in a few weeks, which he did. What I did not, what I failed to look at was that screw tape letters, which I read in college, is a very high reading level in that, um, can't think of the word again, but you just have to think, good grief, sorry. Um, you just have to think very deeply about things. It uses a lot of unfamiliar words, vocabulary, um, that, and just wrapping your brain around thinking of life from the perspective of a demon um, who is trying to destroy good and using the kind of lofty words that C.S. Lewis does. It was a hard read for him, um, who's really a very good reader. Um, so if you do do the honors book study, make sure you look through the actual book and not just the book study, which was really very good, a great way to end the year. Um, just the book was a lot more than what I think either of us were intending. So unless you have any questions on high school, which again, we're gonna start high school too, I think um, I need to look through it once I get it. So I don't have it here with me, I just ordered it yesterday. Um, but maybe I can do a video uh, unboxing of that. So I will next move on to level seven, which my second son for eighth grade will be using. So we haven't actually done it, but I've looked through it. I've already written out what he will be doing every day for the entire year. So I've looked through every single lesson. So I feel like I kind of know what it is. Um, and they say that level seven is actually a high school level of education but it is structured completely differently from high school. So it's gonna have a lot more hand-holding. So it has, not that, this. It has everything broken down into lessons, whereas high school is just um, kind of write your own schedule and um, teaching the kids to have more independence because in college you're given a syllabus and you're said turn it in by this date and it's up to you on a daily basis what you do. And so in high school, that's what they're working towards for the kids. So in the junior high levels, it is still a daily schedule. Um, so that's a big difference between the two. And another difference is the reading level. So he doesn't have four books. He has, there's some reading built into it. There's this that he will be reading throughout the year. So just one and then um, independent reading based on their reading skill level and then the curriculum, Good and the Beautiful, has a whole 
book um, list that they ask you to choose from to read independently 20 minutes a day from. Anyway, so great, great instruction, just a little more hand-holding. So in it, um, it's the same thing. There's geography. So these are actually the geography cards. Look at that. So he is already done. He did all of this in a year. He's very driven though. Um, so it'll have Idaho and it shows you where it is so that you can look at this card and say, oh, what is that? I think it's Idaho. Yes, I'm correct. So you just continue to study that, but they've got um, world, Switzerland is here, rivers, continents, so not just states, lots of world geography. So he will just need to review these throughout the year. Um, he's also to memorize poetry, which is in the book, and grammar. So he's got grammar cards that he's also memorized and worked on, ah. um, which is super important. You just gotta memorize stuff in life. And I love that this holds him accountable to that. So he has a box that he puts these in with cards he's working on and cards he's mastered. Um, so back to the curriculum itself. Um, so on a daily basis, he'll do typically um, read something, whether it's read it in here or read it in here. It tells him exactly what to do. He'll work on some grammar, commas. Oh my gosh, you'll just have to look at what it goes through. Um, and Greek and Latin roots. Here's some geography. Um, and then there's papers built in. Again, you'll just have to kind of look at the website for all of that. There's art, just like every other one. It comes with art study, artist study. Oh, they use, I didn't talk about this. In all levels, they do sentence diagramming, which is thoroughly covered. Sentence diagramming when I was a kid was like, don't even touch it, it's too hard and scary and boring. I love that they learned it. So in high school, they have videos. Um, and here in the other levels, they learn it slowly. But it, it takes the mess of all of it and puts it in an orderly chunk. And so for a kid who, um, we had a couple of our kids, what's a noun, what's a verb? I can't remember after all these years. What's an adverb again? Um, it cements it for them. And now it took all of the mess and made it into a neat and beautiful little category. And so, perfect. So, um, the course companion is what comes with, they actually write in this book, tells them um, all their papers, all that kind of stuff. This is where the reading is. So, they read about artists and authors, which I love. I've always wanted a program that why is this book a classic? Why is Charlotte's Web a classic? And what did the author do to make it stand the test of time? And so they study authors, which to me is just so important. They've got their poetry. For spelling in the upper grades, they do sentence dictation. So the sentences are here. And if they didn't understand, it tells the parent, you know, what they need to work on if they didn't spell something correctly, what skill is missing. And so you can go and study that. And then in the back of this, it has the answer key, which I could rip out if I didn't trust him um, to not cheat and peek. For high school, it's a download. And so I printed those out. Uh, I think I put them away for the year. I printed them out so I didn't have to keep looking at my computer to check his work. But all of the answers are there, including essay question answers of what it should sound like based on their reading. So you don't have to go through and read the book. You can also trust that the book is um, wholesome because all of the good and the beautiful things are extremely wholesome. Um, some people think even too extreme. So you will never find something questionable in the reading. So I use the answer key to kind of give me an idea of what I should be looking for in their essay questions. Um, and then again, here's the grammar instruction for level seven. So all of that is in this book and it tells you in the workbook when to reference that. Um, again, beautiful art all throughout studying art, studying grammar. Um, it's just wonderful. So we haven't done that yet, but that's for his eighth grade year level seven. Again, the, the levels do not equate to grades. So last year he tested into level six. So he finished that up just in time, just perfectly. 
Um, and again, it goes through the same thing. You have your daily activities. This one is one book, so all of your reading is in here. He read a wonderful story about an Australian missionary who um, helped dispel the theory that only male doctors are good at being doctors and can know stuff and whose polio, I can't remember what her name was, who, who's Elizabeth Kinney, whose polio protocol um, was better than any other doctors and how she fought the stigma of um, female doctors or females not being able to uh, know stuff about the medical field. Um, and so, oh, I didn't say, for high school, this focus, and I think high school too, is kind of um, world focused as far as topics of reading. Um, so there's American, there's um, race issues. Um, next year he's gonna read a book on Harriet Tubman. And that whole entire packet is about um, slavery and race issues. And then there's a whole other packet that's gonna be on Native Americans. So if you're concerned that, you know, this looks um, too old or too beautiful and it doesn't cover important um, relevant topics, it absolutely does, especially as they get higher up in the levels. Um, so that is, so there's reading inside here, geography, art, all of that inside here, all the grammar you need, all of the writing and composition, which had a whole lot more um, structure and hand holding and instruction instead of just, you know, write this paper like it would in high school. So it, it um, covers more of that. And then he also had reading in here. Um, and then this is the answer key for level six. So I have everything I need in there to help him along should I need to. Um, but he did really, really well with this. This particular child had writing that was checking off every checklist in the curriculum we used before, but there was no heart in it, no warmth, no um, excitement. So um, this curriculum pulled that out of him. And we also used the creative writing notebook that they have. There's no grade level put on this because it's just little projects every day. Um, he finished most of it, but it's just little projects every day. And he thought of the most creative little stories and I just loved them. And I would write on the side how much I enjoyed reading his ideas, his thoughts. Um, <laughs> so I think this and the curriculum, the creative writing notebook and the curriculum really helped him realize that his writing doesn't have to fit into this little box. Let's dream big, let's think big, let's feel big. Um, and it just really just pulled out that creativity for him. And when he finished the final big paper on Australia, um, and I think family were the two final big papers on this. Um, oh my gosh, they were beautiful. They brought me to tears. So his writing was night and day. This curriculum just really pulls out of your child feeling and um, appreciation for the family around them and nature around them. It is so full of love and hope and um, appreciating God's creation. So big, it is considered Christian, but it is not um, so much that it's like Jesus died for you. It's more God created this um, Jesus loves you, you know, of course it changes as age appropriate goes by, but a lot of it is um, teaching them to be moral, teaching them to be careful about what they put in their minds. Um, yeah, you just have to take a good look at it. I'm trying now to think of more of what it says, but um, so it's not so in your face because they wanna make it useful to whatever particular bent of Christianity you are part of from Catholicism to, you know, Baptist to non-denominational to, um, to Latter-day Saints, just all the different um, parts. And there's even a group, if you are secular homeschooling, there's even a group for how to adjust it and what lessons to be mindful of if you don't want any of that in there. Um, so just so you know that, so we're all on the same page there. So let's move on to level three. This is long, <laughs> um, but like I said, I'm gonna break it up for you once I finish and say, this level starts here, this level starts there. Level three, this is their third edition, brand new 
um, came out, I think January or February of this year. They are updating some of the versions so that they are more user-friendly after lots of feedback. Um, oh, Matthew, I'm sorry, I didn't see that first one. Are there any subjects not covered? The Good and the Beautiful has language arts, which covers geography, art, all the language arts parts. They also have math, they have history, they have handwriting, typing, um, what they, oh, and science. What they probably, they don't have all the math, only up to third grade. Oh, this history, yeah. Um, so basically, Bible, I would say, is more subtle, not like you're not gonna get, here is your Bible curriculum like you might with master books. Um, it's more subtle, that's a good word. So, oh, right here, it kind of talks about, it's backwards, I think, all the different things that this language arts program covers and all of them do. So for level three, um, I am so excited for Rosie to start this this year because we use the old level two, which um, has some kind of the quirks that they hadn't worked out yet, and the new levels have all those quirks worked out. So it should be even a more beautiful and wonderful year. So again, wonderful artwork all throughout, learning to appreciate um, God's creation and the gifts and talents that he's given us. Um, starts out with poetry for the morning, which I love. So in the morning, she will read from the poetry book. And so whether I read or she reads or we go back and forth, she will read, we will read two pages of poetry every single morning, which I love, I love. We never did that before. And I'm so excited to be doing that with my kids and starting out our day that way. What a beautiful way to start the day. So then it moves on to spelling. Let me get to a middle lesson. So excited for the spelling this year. What they did was implemented more um, activities. So she literally has days, it's different every day, where you are to sit and spell your words with sign language. So A, B, C, and it has a chart in the back of the book. I think I pulled it out and laminated it because I don't see it. Um, so she can have that with her and spell her spelling words with sign language. Sometimes it has you draw on your leg your spelling words, Go outside with chalk. Sometimes it says, do your spelling words to jumping jacks. Bounce a ball while you do your spelling words. Um, so fun. Or sometimes it'll have like a weird swirly and it'll say write your spelling words all along the swirly. Um, but, base, but you also write them on a note card so that you can study them throughout. So super excited for her. Here's one, you can write your spelling words within it. And then um, not as much art as some of the higher levels. Um, but so this is gonna show you how to draw that. And then there's your finished product. Um, again, there is all kinds of grammar. They learn spelling rules. They learn phonograms, phonograms, however you say it, it's up for debate. Um, here's one where you do your spelling words while stretching. So how they structured this for level three, level four, super um, independent except for reading and spelling level three before that um, is this is the part that I will do with her so grammar spelling some just discussion it tells me what to say and it tells me what to think and so I'll take this and work with her on this and then she'll flip the page and do her independent part so she'll work on spelling she'll work on grammar review so she's not learning anything new on her own. She gets that from our discussion, but she reviews on her own. And then um, it ends each day with a reading. So she'll also choose a solid, wholesome book to read from 20 minutes a day. And then she'll also sometimes read from her reader to me so that I can make sure she's on target still with her reading. And then in here, there'll be Read questions based on her independent reading. So what's the title of your book? What's the setting of your book? And then um, some days there is questions based on this reading when she has those. And then there's also writing built in. So she'll start the beginnings of paragraph writing. And I think there's small paper writing um, in here too. I can't remember. Kind of all gets jumbled in my brain. Um, but definitely a step up in writing. Oh, here's an opinion essay tells me exactly how to teach it to her, exactly what to look for, and um, tells her how to structure it. And it starts out small and gentle and builds. 
which I love. I think she's gonna have an excellent, beautiful, wonderful language arts year, and I am so excited. Seriously, I love sitting down with them and teaching them um, language arts with the good and the beautiful. I look forward to it every morning. It is a beautiful experience. Sometimes they're grouchy, <laughs> but if I've had my coffee, I'm not grouchy. Um, I did go ahead and get her one book that she thought looked interesting and they had a sale on this particular day. So this is published by The Good and the Beautiful. They're coming out with new books all the time. Um, and so this one she thought was cute and it was on sale. And again, it has the reading level right on the side which may or may not correlate to their language arts level because some kids need grammar or writing instruction at this level, but their reading level is skyrocketed or their reading level is behind. So there's a separate reading assessment. Um, but so this, she'll start out the year, this will be her little gift at the beginning of the school year um, to start out her 20 minutes of wholesome reading. And then she can go from there um, and pick something or I can buy some more of their books and have it shipped. They ship by weight. So um, you can kind of order whatever you want. Um, <laughs> you can kind of order whatever you want and um, they will weigh it and only charge you for the shipping based on that. So you can kind of order all throughout the year without being like, oh no, the $7 flat rate shipping. Um, so let's move to level two. Level two, like I said, I have the old level two they have a new one out now. I think it came out last fall of 2019. Um, if you can't find the new level two and you're getting anxious, this is still a great level. It's just that some lessons are gonna take you like an hour and you're just not gonna get through it with a, a second, third grader. And some lessons are gonna take you like five minutes. And so when they updated the versions, um, that's what they corrected and is that each lesson takes you 30 to 45 minutes instead of, you know, the all over the placeness. Um, we had a great year with this. Titus has half of this to do, and then he gets to start on level three. Um, and, you know, when we were working through it um, with Rosie, because that's where she assessed, she was able to pick up on everything so much faster than her brother because she's older. And so I could see why they say older kids breeze through things and younger kids don't you know, sentence diagramming for him and remembering where everything went came a lot slower, where for her, it was just like, oh yeah, boom, 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 this is where everything goes, I get it, thanks mom. Um, whereas for him, I still had to sit with him and remind him, oh, that's right, that's not a verb, that's an adverb, or, you know, um, he's a great reader, but some of that geography stuff, or I'm sorry, that some of that grammar stuff um, was a little bit harder for him you know, is writing just as a kid who's a couple years younger than her doesn't come as easily as it does for her. So um, he moved through the book. I decided to just let her fly and he moved through the book at a more normal pace for his age. Um, so they, again, they learned grammar. Here's where he found the commas and capitalizations missing. And here's the answers to that. Um, they're learning homophones. They're learning spelling rules. Um, you can see these levels are still free, so you can download it. Even if you don't wanna use it, you can download it and see every single thing your kid is going to be doing. Um, but I definitely, like I said, this is still a great level or addition, um, but definitely if you can get your hands on the third edition of level two. Um, even the books, the readers are different. So this is the old level two reader that he reads to me. Um, Wholesome reading um, helps you slow down and appreciate the beauty of God's creation, the beauty of family, the beauty of, you know, behavior and um, morals. And um, they studied Switzerland. He traced maps. Um, I can't find any of that now. Uh, we just had a really great year with this. And then it comes with the old level, the new level, this is all incorporated, but the old level came with um, the poetry. He was supposed to memorize three poems throughout the year, which he did, but apparently I didn't write down. Um, words, spelling words that they should be memorizing. Um, reading lists, so once they read this perfectly in a certain amount of time, they got to color a seashell. Um, this also has all the spelling rules for you. Um, what else is in here? I can't remember. Oh, reading assessments. So they need to 
at the beginning of the year, read all of this. What time did they finish in? At the end of the year, read all of this throughout the year to, so you can see their improvement um, and what they might need to work on. And that level and several other levels come with these flashcards, which we already basically had from another program. So I still, I actually just sold these, but um, so it has all the sounds of the phonograms and then it has like the special blends and stuff like that. So there's a whole bunch of those um, so that you can quiz them on the first few minutes of the morning. Um, so then let's move on to, let's move on to handwriting really quickly. Let's do that. So we've used several levels of handwriting. My favorite thing about them is the art in them because part of handwriting is strength in your fine motor skills. And so you can get that by coloring and drawing too. So this is level five, which Isaiah used to refine his cursive, which he learned through another program and to also work on his print. So sometimes I would say, actually don't do this in cursive, do this in print so that he could really focus and slow down on that. And, um, oh, this is beautiful. So this is what he drew. For Rosie, this was overwhelming to her, even with the squares. So I would cover them with sticky notes. And so all she could see would be this. And I would say, just draw that. And remove the sticky note when you're done and put it somewhere else and then draw the next section. Um, my little artist, <laughs> she found it overwhelming. So that's level five, Titus. Um, I got the PDF for level two and had it top bound since he's left-handed, which now I'm like, it's irrelevant. It really is because you flip. Anyways, um, so he just started this towards the end of next year, last year when he finished something else. And it has a little bit of art built into, has learning letters information. Um, I think it's their new level three that is something nobody else does, which is teaches them cursive following colors. So the colors of the rainbow are always the same, Roy G, Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blah, blah, blah. So they learn to trace the letters based on the colors of the rainbow. And so that's what Titus will be doing when he finishes this one. Um, but I don't have that here. And then Rosie did level four. Again, you can see all of the samples on their pages, but we just loved loved the art built in. So there's usually either a full page of art following a full page of writing, or there's a half a page of writing with a little bit of art. So that's how that works. And like I said, I don't do any of the math because I already have math after all these years of homeschooling, but we did buy their musical multiplication, which comes with booklets that have pictures to go along with what you're memorizing and then you get a download of the songs. So I'm not a singer. What can I remember? Um, three times four is 12. Three times four is 12. 12 books on a shelf. 12 books on a shelf or something like that. Um, so that helps them memorize it. We weren't as good as I wanted to be on it. I think we got through two books before the end of the year instead of all four, but I am determined <laughs> to use this again more because I think um, as much as I love mental math, you just have to memorize uh, multiplication facts. Science, science is the last thing. So, excuse me. Like I said, we did two units, we did, um, space science, and we did kingdoms and classifications last year. So I love their science. The thing is, I have a lot of science, and I'll try to make some videos of the other stuff, but I really love their science, and as uh, frugal as I am, when you really love something, you spend the money on it, and their, their stuff is not expensive. So I went ahead and said, mm, my other science is nice, I might supplement with it, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna do the good and the beautiful science because they retain so much more and they love it so much more. So each of the science unit is loose leaf because you have the lesson, you have pictures that you are to kind of study and hand out and examine, and you also have worksheets. Let's see if I can find any. Um, there we go. That you wanna pull out and make copies of. Um, you also get the free digital version of this when you purchase the printed version. So that way you can print out as many worksheets as you want. This is meant for like, it depends on the subject you choose, second or third grade. 
up through sixth grade and then for seventh and eighth they have additional activities to beef it up so those are at the end of some of the lessons so i took it apart and i laminated which you do not have to do but i love laminating i laminated the stuff that i wanted to pass around to them so that it wouldn't fall apart but the lessons I either keep loose leaf or I stick them in page protectors. Um, so that's one lesson, the rest of the lesson, and then this tells me when to pull the new vocab word. So I laminated the vocab words after cutting those out and I put them on the wall so that we can review them every morning when we start, which super helped them memorize stuff. A lot of curriculums will not hold you accountable to memorizing, um, but this one does and I think that's a big help to their retention. Um, and then they also have for each science between a few and quite a few of these mini books, which I also laminated. Um, the other ones I also bound myself, but um, just to kind of hand out, they have beautiful pictures and kind of more details on lessons that might be a little more intense. Um, so these were really great studies of scientists are in them. And the year that I had space before we got that monster back there, I had a science table, and so I bound these mini books and put them there with books from the library, um, maybe my microscope, and so they could just visit the science table whenever they wanted and um, kind of look at stuff. So that's why I really like these, because it's really hands-on and it gives them something tangible to have all the time. Um, and I put our vocab words on the wall above that so they could review those at any time. Um, they also, some of the lessons also have, again, I laminated these, you don't have to, but I just wanted them to hold up better, um, games that you play. So match the mushroom to the uh, mushroom thing, fact. Um, so lots of different games, which really helps with retention too. I don't see that in other curriculums. But like other curriculums, it also has activities and science projects and, um, forms for you to fill out. That's that circle page I showed you earlier um, so that you can begin learning how to do lab reports. So teaching um, simple things for that. Um, there's other activities. We learned all about the different kingdoms and had to fill in this. And we made a little booklet. Each of them had a booklet of that. Um, so just lots and lots of creative ways of learning for their science that I have not seen in other curriculums. You might get facts, videos, and experiments in other curriculums, but you don't get the games, you don't get, you know, the cute little booklets for them to constantly be reviewing, you don't get the beautiful vocab cards to hang on the wall. Just really neat stuff. And another thing they loved were these, um, for this particular unit, were these cups that you tape these onto. So if the universe were compared to um, the order of kingdoms, that would represent kingdom. And so then we get smaller. My planet is like a phylum. And so we have a little bit less um, creatures in a phylum. And we put this over it so they couldn't cheat by counting the smaller amount of, um, once they had started memorizing it, the smaller amount of animals. So we had these off in the beginning while they started memorizing it. Um, so all of them now know kingdom Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Apparently, I kind of know it too. So, um, very hands-on. Love it, love it, love it, love their science unit. So, we will be, I just ordered mammals yesterday. It's one of their newer ones, and it looks incredible, which again is why I'm willing to spend the money even though I already have animal science from another curriculum. I think that might be everything. I haven't done history. We have other history we love. Uh, oh, typing, typing, typing. I have typing one and two. Here's typing two. It's different than you might see in other programs where it's all computer-based. This is not computer-based. You set this up by your computer and it shows you where to put your fingers, tells you what to do, and you type this out. Like everything they have, it's very good and gentle and beautiful. As you can tell, you stick a sticker on it when you're done. Uh, we did a lot the year before last. We were not very good about it this year, so hopefully we can be much better about it in the coming year. 
I think that's it. I'm sorry, I can't talk and read your questions <laughs> apparently very well, I'm sorry. Cousin David and Sienna, I love you very much too and I miss you guys too. Um, so if you have any questions at any point, please feel free to ask them whether this is from the YouTube post or the Facebook post. Again, I will fill the comments with links and um, more information and beginning and endings. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, I devour this curriculum and their Facebook groups are amazing. So please feel free to ask. Thanks guys.